first to second, she gets lively. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome back to another first ride video. Now, this is a bike I'm sort of really quite excited about trying. It's the new, it's of, of course, it's the new Triumph Street Triple 765. RS. Now, there's been a few changes for the, to this bike for 2023. I rode the old one of these when it was updated probably two years ago, three years ago. The last time this bike was updated, absolutely loved it. Triumph have made it even better. It's now got seven more brake horsepower, so it's 128 horsepower from that 765 motor. You know, based, based on what Triumph have learned from Moto2 racing these engines, they now know how far they can push it, reliably push it, and it's now 128 horsepower. It's also still incredibly light, 188 kilos, fully fueled, so, you know, still a light motorcycle. They've made some geometry changes. They've moved the rear of the bike up 20 millimeter to put a bit more weight on the nose to make it a bit sharper you know, that's changed the whole geometry of the bike and uh, yeah i'm really rather excited about riding this so join me for a bit of a spin through the countryside we've got beautiful weather as usual at the moment in the uk we normally have it shit don't we but we've had sun for so long it can't last forever but i'm gonna make the most of it so join me grab yourself something to drink hot or cold the preference is yours and join me after the intro. Chopsy, roll it. Firing her up. You've still got that five inch TFT on this machine. You know, nice, pretty nice. Um, I don't really like the display on this bike though. I don't like how they've done the rev counter. They've tried to make it a bit too stylized. I prefer a much simpler, just an analog sort of rev counter. What is there? Why have we got all this? I don't like the display on this bike. So that's the first thing straight away. <laughs> I've started with a negative. I think the display could be better. But listen to this. <laughs> It's got a soft limiter. Ah, the street triple has now got a soft limiter. I've seen and I've heard it all. What if you put it in first gear? That's better. Listen to that. I do love a triple. I do love a triple. And nobody, but nobody does triples better than Triumph. Oh, am I just saying that? MV are pretty good and all, aren't they? But <laughs> the Triumph triples are absolutely fantastic. And I think Triumph going into Moto2 was, I think, perhaps one of the best things they ever could have done. You know, obviously that's a massive investment for the company, but it's just meant this engine has been developed, developed, developed. And it's now 128 horsepower from an under, under 800 cc. 128 horsepower, a seven horsepower increase over the old bike. 80 newton meters of torque. So even a decent dash of torque as well. Is it going to be enough to get past this BMW though, is the question. So back to the basics before we get too carried away about the performance of this machine. Now, as you know, as I mentioned, I'm 6'2", 20 stone. I feel really rather comfortable on this machine. It's got a nice wide seat. You've got plenty of room to move back and forward within the seat. The bars are, you know, it's, not, it's not too much of a flat bar. You're relatively upright. You're sort of an in-between sort of position, I'd say. In this is the seating position. Yeah, I'm leant forward a tiny little bit, but not too much. Nothing like the M1000R or the S1000R. You're much more upright than that. The pegs feel sort of behind me a little bit, so that gives it sort of a bit of a sporty intent to the feel of the riding position, but it's a really comfortable position, not too aggressive. I'd like it to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm really liking aggressive naked. It, it's a bit upright, but it's got a little bit over the front, enough over the front. I think that 20 mil increase to the rear shock length has just pushed a little bit more over the weight over the front. Woohoo! And I like that, I like that a lot. 
the seat feels pretty comfortable, pretty well padded, and the fact that it's wide, it's supporting the whole of my ass. So I know on a longer ride, I think this will be a comfortable bike because my bottom is fully supported. And that's some seat with my bottom. What excels with this bike and what was always fantastic was the handling, the way it moves around. That seating position works when you've done the speed picks up because you can just lift your bum out of the seat, get your leg out a little bit. The bike comes with Pirelli Super Coursers, so you know, real sticky rubber as well. And this thing is about performance, absolutely about performance. The suspension feels a bit, a bit sort of hard, but not too bad. With the Olin's rear shock, it's still got a very plush feel to it. The braking power on this bike is incredible. Stylema calipers. I think they're Stylemas. Am I right in saying they're Stylemas? I'm pretty sure they are. What makes it is the Brembo MCS Master Cylinder with the not only adjustable lever span, but adjustable pressure within the cylinder. So you can tailor the brake feel. But they're so powerful, really quite aggressive. Not as aggressive as the, the M1000R brakes but quite an aggressive, you know, front setup on this. Plenty of confidence you can start, you know. The top, one of the top five braking systems out there on this bike. And because it's so light, you know, with that braking performance with the Stylemas, you know, you've got so much power here. Because you're stopping such a lightweight machine. Rear brake, yeah, rear brake's also very nice. It's one of those setups where you think, should I be braking everything up front? There is a little bit of weight transfer when you go on the front, a little bit of dive, perhaps a little bit more dive than what I'd ideally like, but the suspension is fully adjustable. So I can go in and wind in a little bit more compression damping maybe. This model's got heated grips, I'm not sure whether that's standard or not, the heated grips, probably not, probably an extra. And you can also now have cruise control as an option, so you can add cruise control to this machine now as well which is a nice little touch isn't it what is lovely with the with this triple engine is its manners are beautiful you know it's almost got that sort of straight four quality to it in that how easy it is to live with you know and you can load the engine up from very low rpm you know with no problem like what how many revs am i doing but it's really difficult to say i just over, over 2000 revs i think you know it just pulls lovely top gear they have actually changed the gear ratio slightly for this year. They've made first gear taller, but then they've shortened all the other gears, which is probably a good idea, because it means you can give it full beans in first. It will lift the wheel on the power in first, but it's not, you know, it's not too aggressive, which you would have been with a shorter gearing. Then they've dropped the ratios on the other gears. So ba ba ba, you're up through the box like that. Blipper and quick shifter also. Which is brilliant, you know, one of the best systems, really good, the quick shifter biffer on this bike. You've got a fuel gauge, range to empty, another change for this year is they've actually reduced the size of the fuel tank. This used to have a 17 litre fuel tank, was actually bigger than the 1200 RS Speed Triple. I think that's got a 15 litre tank. This had a 17 litre tank on the smaller capacity bike. You could get over 200 miles on this machine, but try to reduce the size now to 15 litres. I don't really know why, you know, just they've said to bring it in line with the other, you know, other bikes in the category, the other middleweights, but that's not, surely a, a bigger fuel tank is an advantage. Maybe, I mean, it does feel very thin now between my legs. Maybe it's an aesthetic thing to make the bike look a bit better with a slightly smaller tank. It's the only thing, only reason I could think of, and, and I think it, it does. It does look better, this machine. I like the tweaks they've done to the styling on this. Oh, this road is really bumpy. And despite being set up, you know, to be sporty, this bike, it's actually nice, it's actually plush. I think that Odin's rear shock really helps, helps that. You know, if anything, if you any sort of knocks and bangs you are getting through the suspension is definitely coming from the front end, not the rear. I think the Moto 2 version of this bike would be absolutely incredible because that's got the clip-ons as well, so you're going to have a bit more weight on your wrist with the Moto 2 and it's got the full Olin's front end on it, so you're going to have that performance and plushness. Yeah, I'd love to try a Moto 2. I know they're completely sold out. I mean, that is actually a bike I could, 
consider buying, you know, that Moto 2, I'd almost wish I'd bought one because I've seen people trying to sell them for like 20 grand now and stuff like that because <laughs> they're sold out. So if you've got a Moto 2 anyone, I would love to try the Moto 2 edition. I don't even think Triumph have any any demos of that machine. Hill climb. When you go on the gas in first, the front gets very light. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is very, very good. Gas. Wind it up. Takes a little bit of winding up there. It is uphill. And I am 20 stone. But yeah, the, the, the feedback and feel and the, you know, from the tyres as well, the tyres make a world of difference. Yeah, it handles beautifully. The old one did, I, I, I can't, the old one was brilliant. So I can't tell you, oh yeah, it feels much nicer than the old one, because it was too long ago I rode the old one. But that is beautiful for a set of twisties there. Lovely. Yeah, first to second, she gets lively. That's so smooth, that power delivery is delicious. I'm gonna do that again. First. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Pulls really cleanly there. I've got a really bad cramp now. Oh, my leg. Oh, I've got cramped out. Oh. With the traction control on this bike, you know, it's all linked. The wheelie control and the traction control is all linked on this. So you, you can't separate it. I mean, yeah, again, that, I guess that comes with the price point. But I do find the Triumphs a little bit nanny-ish, you know, the electronics. I mean, I can't go into race mode while I'm rolling. You can only go into race mode while, you know, while you're at idle. So, you know, and stuff like that. And, you, you know, if you try and turn the wheelie control off, or you, you can't just turn the wheelie, if you turn the traction control off, you know, it will come back on when you turn the bike on and off. You know, even like Suzuki are, 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 are going up, you know, moving away from that now. The GSX 8S, you turn the bike on and off, the traction, traction control stays off. You know, even the Japanese are starting to do that now. So it can be a little bit nanny-ish on the Triumph, on the electronic side. I do think their electronics, even on some of the other bikes, are lagging behind a little bit to some of the, uh, the other European models, but hey-ho, it's a minor point on this, but the price point of the bike. Right, it's in track mode. I turned off the tra traction control in the track mode, and I turned the bike back on, it's come back into road mode. If I now go to, to track, to the track setting, bing, yeah that's good, that's good, so I've disabled traction control in the track mode, it won't go into the track mode when you turn the bike on and off, but if you, if you before you set off, if you put it in track mode, your wheelie controls stay off, so that's, that's, that's quite a good little thing, that's okay, I can live with that, I can live with that, that's good, so if I want to do wheelies, I'll just put it in track mode, but I can't put it in track mode while I'm rolling, is the only disadvantage. I have to stop to do that, but I'll live with that. High speed corner out the sea. I love the ergos and the riding position and how easy this bike is to move around on. Makes a really big difference that. Yeah, you know, it would be brilliant on track because of that, because it's easy to move around on. You know, everything's low, you're on top of the bike, there's plenty of room in the seat. Even some of my size, I find it easy. Morning. So even though I will look too big on this machine at six foot two and twenty stone, it doesn't feel cramped. There's plenty of room on it. It's really comfortable for me. So don't be put off if you want one of these, thinking it's going to be too cramped if you're a larger rider. There's loads of room on this, and it'll be brilliant on track. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, the front brakes are amazing. It's a sharp bike. I mean, there's a little bit of softness to it as well. You know, it's not rock hard. <laughs> Compared to the M1000R, you know, it feels very soft. But it's, it's, it's a good compromise, I think, for a road bike. It's got some sporty intent there, but it's pretty plush still. It's not jarring me everywhere. I can still feel a bit of what's going on with the tarmac. 
you know, and of course it is fully adjustable. So I can adjust things if I wanted to go a bit sportier. Obviously, if I bring my spanners with me, because it's not electronic suspension. I do actually have at home at the moment the Duke 890R. So we're going to be doing a comparison, me and Greg, with this new Street Triple and the Duke. So we're going to do a comparison between the KTM 890 Duke car, the Super Scalpel, and the Street Triple RS, this one. So we're going to do a full comparison of these two bikes coming up. So if you're interested in one of these sort of higher end performance middleweights, I think the Duke and this 765 RS are the two top dogs. So we're going to put them head to head. So if that sounds of interest, you know what you've got to do. Subscribe below and I'll see you in the next one.